Before we begin, I'd like to emphasize that this podcast is an extension of my surgical work and research at Visionary Eye Doctors. And thank you all for tuning in every week or multiple times to kind of hear our about our research and how we help patients. And thank you to all of you who have flown in from all over the world to see us here. So I'm very humbled by that. So it is my hope and desire to keep this information free to all of you, especially to my dear patients. And in keeping with this mission, we are very thankful to our first sponsor for the podcast wizard dry eye mask many of you have heard me talk about the wizard before i have loved this product for years it looks like this i have one right next to my bed so does my husband i used mine last night and even you know if i can't sleep i'll use it uh, it's a wonderful product that you just plug in next to your bed or even at your computer i've been known if i start to develop a style to do the wizard as i type and then switch you know if i have warm just like a warm compress so it works wonderful for that so thank you to the wizard if you mention our name uh, podcast visionary eye doctors dr kramers they'll give you a one-year guarantee if anything happens to the product just call them up and they'll replace it for you for free so thank you to the wizard research team for sponsoring this podcast enjoy Everybody, it's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers, one of the board certified surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. Today, we're going to talk about recurrent corneal erosions and something called anterior basement membrane dystrophy, very long term, also known as MAP dot fingerprint. So, if any of you have ever had something in your eye or a scratched cornea or an ulcer or just don't open your, don't blink for 10 minutes, you'll have excruciating pain because the cornea is the most sensitive part of the entire body. It has the most number of nerve fiber endings in a square millimeter uh, compared to any other part of the body. So it's very sensitive. And so a lot of patients will come in having foreign body sensation, dry eye symptoms, grittiness, burning, uh, blurry vision, reflex tearing, or after the cataract surgery or after the refractive surgery or after some type of surgery, they notice their eyes more, they'll blame the surgeon and the surgery. And sometimes it's not the surgery's fault or the surgeon's fault. And I wanna talk about something that's missed very commonly, even by expert cornea surgeons, called anterior basement membrane dystrophy. And it's not necessarily their fault. This is all microscopic. So I wanna just show you what we're talking about. So on the front surface of the eye, the cornea, so if you're looking at me on a side profile, the dome is called the cornea and it has multiple layers. And those layers are crucial to allow the nerve fiber uh, endings to not feel pain constantly. So there's something called the epithelium, which is the front part of that cornea. The cornea is the window to the eye. And so if you imagine your window having multiple layers, the outermost layer is called the epithelium. The next layer is called Bowman's membrane. It kind of supports those epithelial cells. And then there comes the kind of the stroma and then decimase membrane and then the endothelial. So there's basically five layers of the cornea and each one serves a very important purpose. The first outermost one is the epithelium, which protects the actual nerve fiber layer. The Bowman's membrane supports that epithelial layer. And then there's stroma where the nerves are located is that kind of extra kind of cushiony component that keeps the structure of the window intact. It's the biggest part called the stroma. Then there's decimase membrane, which supports the stroma and provides nutrition, we think, to the stroma. And then the endothelial cells, which are the probably the most crucial in the sense that they keep the cornea clear. They're pumping cells, so the pumping mechanism of keeping the water out of the cornea, because the cornea and the stroma are the same collagen fibers, and the stroma is pure white. So if you look at me or you look at anybody's eyeball, you're looking at the white part of the eye. That's the same tissue as the clear part of the eye. The only difference is the endothelial cells of the cornea pump out the water to keep it clear. So the cornea is very complex because it's really the most important sense and in a sense is the cornea. You want to be able to see and you want to be able to live your life without any type of pain. And if anything gets into your eye, immediately the nerves will fire pain, pain, do something because you don't want to go blind. Okay, so on the surface of the cornea, when we look under the microscope, which is called the slit lamp, we will see sometimes if we're very, very careful and we take some time and we have patients not blink for a few seconds and then they blink, The when we put a drop called fluorescein on the surface of the cornea and patients don't blink, sometimes we'll actually see a little staining in the form of a map 
or a dot or even like a fingerprint. That's why it's called map dot fingerprint. And what it is is the anterior basement membrane or the, the Bowman's layer is a little bit defective and it does it allows the epithelial cells to be irregular. So it's it's hard to kind of find a great comparison, but let's say that you have uh, you know my my hand and there's five layers, and I'm looking at the epithelial layer. Well, the second layer, the Bowman's layer, if it's irregular, it won't support the epithelial layer, and it'll form little wrinkles and these little maps, and we can sometimes see it. And what that means is that the attachments, the adhesion molecules, are not allowing the epithelium to really be attached to that Bowman's layer, and that can cause the sloughing of the epithelial cells, the disappearance or the irregularity of those epithelial cells with even minor uh, things like rubbing the eye or a minor procedure like a Chalazian excision, definitely LASIK, PRK, refractive surgery, cataract surgery. Anytime we cut the cornea, the epithelial cells sometimes can just slough off. The classic example is a patient who gets an eye, like a fingernail in the eye, a branch in the eye, um, and they actually happen to have this predisposed genetic condition called anterior basement membrane dystrophy, and then they start having recurrent erosions and the, the cornea can't heal, and they are in constant misery because it's very painful. So we like to pick up anterior basement membrane dystrophy in patients that don't have any problems, so we can warn them to tell also their children, because there seems to be a genetic component, that if you ever have a weird pain, you know, you let us know, or if you're planning to have any type of refractive surgery, the surgeon should know, or same thing with cataract surgery or any type of eye surgery, because sometimes we just rub the eye the wrong way, or patients wake up, and when they wake up, especially if the eye is dry, their lack of meibomian oil or the lack of water, when they open their eyes, they get the shearing pain, sometimes in the middle of the night, sometimes when they wake up, sometimes after a nap, and the pain is excruciating because as they open their eye, if there's no oil or there's a lack of lubrication, the eyelid will slough off those epithelial cells and expose the nerves and you'll have pain. And so if you ever hear the word map dot fingerprint or anterior basement membrane dystrophy, it's not the end of the world. It just means we wanna make sure your meibomian glands and your oil and your water and the lubrication of the eye is working well so you never have a problem with this cycle of inflammation and sloughing off and ripping off the epithelial cells and then having to try to heal. So it is genetically, there's a component genetically, often we'll see it being passed down to the children. It, there's a concern that there might be a genetic component similar to those genetic components of things like uh, macular dystrophy or other corneal dystrophies. And I just printed out some of the names, but I didn't find anything to say it's uh, completely related, but there's something called the Col A. COL8A2 gene, which is associated with Fuchs dystrophy, which has been sometimes seen in patients with anterior basement membrane dystrophy. And then the other one is the TGFBI gene, the transforming growth factor beta induced, not thank God it's Friday gene, but TGFBI gene, which is sometimes associated with other dystrophies that may be associated with map dot fingerprint. So if you have it, have your kids checked out for it because they might actually inherit it. So what happens if you have this condition and you wake up constantly with pain, you're getting recurrent corneal erosions, you're having a lot of pain? Of course, the first thing we do is try to save your gland, uh, your tear function. So we try to do warm compresses, blinking, uh, you're using artificial tears, you'll use the anti-inflammatory, Zyder, Restasis, Sequa, uh, Vivi, anything to keep the inflammatory process low. Uh, things like Mibo, which is just a fat drop, but does work, may help with symptoms, but it's not an anti-inflammatory. Those try to stabilize kind of the inflammation in terms of the FDA-approved anti-inflammatories. We'll sometimes use steroids if there's a lot of inflammation. Uh, we love to use autologous serum and platelet-rich plasma. That's my top pick for this condition because it actually has been shown in multiple papers to heal actually those adhesion molecules and heal the tissue, the actual underlying cause. So there's been many papers to show that that does heal the actual underlying issue, although it's not a cure, but it does help, especially platelet-rich plasma, which has more growth factors and healing cells that help heal tissue. So if you actually have the actual recurrent erosion, the first thing you do, of course, is patch the eye a bit, get to your doctor, 
patch the eye in the sense of you're having a lot of pain, get to the doctor right away. They're gonna take a look for any infection. They're gonna try to help you either with the lubrication, platelet rich plasma. They might put a contact lens to let the eye heal. They might use amniotic membrane like Procara or one of the other options to heal the tissue. And then they're gonna start giving you antibiotics, prevent an infection. And then they're gonna start talking about the next thing. Once you get over the hump of the initial pain, they're gonna see how the epithelium heals. And is it healing with scar tissue, without scar tissue? Sometimes it can heal with scar tissue. So that's why we like to use the combination of antibiotic, steroid, and then either an amniotic membrane, platelet rich plasma, a autologous serum, because that tries to prevent the scarring from happening. Okay, now what happens if it keeps happening? Recurrent coronial erosions can be misery. There used to be we would do things like stromal puncture where we take a needle and literally push in the epithelium into the stroma to create adhesion into that basement membrane. That's an uncomfortable procedure because it can, you know, be, we open up the epithelium to do that sometimes. We sometimes will do diamond burr where we take a a little uh, machine that has a diamond studs on the very end and it rotates super fast and we take off the whole epithelium again the same idea trying to create these new adhesion molecules to attach the epithelium to the basement membrane but now a lot of the times we use what's called phototherapeutic keratectomy ptk phototherapeutic keratectomy is like PRK, except there's a difference. We use a laser to take off the front surface, and that is more precise in uh, creating these adhesions between the epithelium and the basement membrane and even the stroma. So it tries to work better. It's often sometimes now covered by insurance. So if patients are miserable, sometimes that is the definitive treatment because it really can help. So some, sometimes patients will come in with terrible dry eye, We've tried everything. They have anterior basement membrane dystrophy. We're trying to avoid PTK only because there are risks with any procedure. There's always a risk any procedure can make patients feel worse or even cause a microscopic scar tissue, but that's rare, but it can happen. So we try to avoid PTK, but if we've tried everything and they're not improving, we'll do PTK to try to get rid of the anterior basement membrane dystrophy, uh, at least the, the, the big component that causes the recurrent erosion in the sense that we can stabilize those cells a little better. It's sometimes not a cure, but it works very well in about 80% of patients. So those are the things we try to do. So if your child has, uh, let's say, anterior basement membrane dystrophy, what can you do? Well, the biggest thing is trying to avoid screen time because anything that makes the oil glands dry up such as screen time, uh, chronic contact lens use, which of course has its positives and negatives, uh, artificial uh, tears that have preservatives, so preservatives can affect it, autoimmune disease, uh, Accutane, you know I'm not a fan of, those things can dry up the oil glands and lead to more problems down the line if they have it. And of course, avoiding any type of eye trauma if you're playing basketball, running through the woods, wear glasses, protection, don't get you know hit in the eye, that kind of thing. And then the rest is up to just kind of treating the actual underlying problem if we can, if it becomes an issue. A lot of patients live without any problems, so you don't need to worry too much if you have it, but just be aware, save your meibomian glands and do everything you can to stay healthy and improve your immune cells and have a low inflammatory diet to maybe help decrease inflammation generally in your whole body, which helps the tear film. So I hope you found this podcast helpful. Please pass it on to friends and family. The best thing you can do to help us is subscribe. And of course, you know, buy a wizard dry eye mask because they support this podcast. Have a great day. Take care.